ball. They love to compete. And, and, and so that's always going to be at the forefront of what we do. That's not going to change. Now, uh, are we going to um, go after – we're going to always look into a lot of things and, and, and go through whether we're talking about college players, pro players. We're going to turn over every single stone that we can. That, that's going to be a part of the process. But the, the, the character is always going to be at the forefront of that. From your vantage point uh, through four non-padded practices, how's the quarterback competition looking? It's been great, and, and, and look, we have a lot of competition at every position. Um, I, I thought Dave uh, Archer said it well the other day when he was talking about Joe Montana going into San Francisco's camp, fighting for his job, and that's the mindset at every position. Everyone's here knowing they're, they're fighting not only with the, the players here for, for, for their jobs, but also outside the building. We have an excellent personnel staff that's uh, looking at every other roster, and, and we're always trying to bring in competition from outside the building. But at, at that position, it's been great. Um, we're really excited about where, where Desmond is, excited about where Marcus is. Both players, obviously, you see the physical tools and the traits. They're mobile. They run around. Uh, you see the throws that they're making out on the field. So they both have all the physical traits, but the, 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 the makeup, really the way they prepare, the, the mental, the, the types of teammates they are, um, we've been very pleased with both players, and, and we're excited about that. How do um, some of the players and fans are having trouble squaring Ridley's one-year suspension with the six-year suspension for for Deshaun? How do we? How do you explain that to the folks that don't understand? That's the first question you asked, and now you're asking it a different way. That's that's one of those vet savvy for you for you young guys out here. That's a vet savvy move right there. That's the. Um, but again, look, it's our job. That's a league matter, and and we have enough on our plate here, so we have to focus on the things we can control. Do you think it's fair that he just, that and, and it, it's that, the third time you've asked the same question? There you go. Did y'all get together and work together on this? I like I like the teamwork because I thought y'all were kind of nemesis, but I guess there's a little teamwork going on here. I like it. It's impressive. So so since he did that for you, are you gonna let him take the first question uh, with the coach next time? Yeah. I know you're, you're gonna say this the same question again, but. You said the right type of guy. Did you feel Deshaun was the right type of guy for you? That's, we've, we've had that discussion. We've, we're not going to continue to rehash the same thing. We're not going to do that. We've talked about that. We've talked about that matter, and, and we're moving forward. Terry, if I were to talk to you in three weeks, four weeks, I'd, I'd ask you, how would you just define a successful training camp? What would you tell me in three weeks? And, and I would say it's, it's all about the competitiveness that we see out there and, and the way that if we have players fighting and competing for jobs, and, and that's what's most important. Um, the, the, the number one factor you're, you're evaluating right now is, does the player know what to do? We want to be the smartest, toughest, most competitive football team in the NFL. So the number one factor is, do they know what to do? Can they take it from the meeting room onto the field? And can they do it the way they're being coached? And they, can they do it with high effort? That's what's most important. And when you see that at every position and when you see the competition, that's when you know you're going to have a good football team because once we get into the season, you want a team that's going to go out there and fight and compete and do literally whatever they can do to win every single game, whatever day of the week it is. So when you see the competition out here, it, you're not going to see it on game day if you don't see it out here. So when you have players that are out there competing, that's when I would say you have a successful training camp. Do you have an indication yet of when Deion Jones will be ready to play? No, he's on PUP right now, and we haven't put a timetable on it, but um, he, he, he's working with the trainers and um, working to get himself ready, and when he is, he'll come out and compete. Do you believe he, will, uh, he will be able to play. He will come back out before the end of training camp. He'll be able to practice. He's, again, we're not going to yeah, not gonna put a timetable on it, um, but, but I, I know he's out there doing his rehab, and, and again, when he's ready to come out, he'll come out and compete. Consider him part of your long-term plan at linebacker. Well, we're not going to. You can ask that question about – any player on the roster right now at any position, we'd answer it the same way. Um, we're gonna, we're always trying to build the roster the right way, and every decision we make is going to be to the betterment of the team as a whole. And so, with with any player, um, we got 90 players on the roster. You ask that question, um, and, and we'd answer it the same way. Thanks. Terry, I, th I think the team has only announced that he had off-season surgery, but did wasn't specific when and wasn't specific what the surgery was. Can you provide some specifics? No, it's again. He had off-season surgery. He's going through the rehab process, and and uh, we're not going to put a timetable on it. When it comes to roster construction, um, can you kind of give us a little behind-the-scenes look at what's going on in the building? You know, we see a lot of what's going on out here, but 
what's kind of the scouting department looking at right now in terms of getting to a 53 man touchdown? Yeah, so, so right now the scouting department, they're, they're, they're obviously here every day and, and evaluating the players here. And, and we have a really inclusive, uh, cohesive process that everyone in the building is, is working on um, the same thing. And so the coaches have their evaluations, the scouts have their evaluations, and we do that on a daily basis. But what the scouting department is also doing, again, is they're looking outside the building. And you see every day they're monitoring the waiver wire. They're looking at players that are on the street, um, having, bringing in workouts, and, and look, assessing the other rosters. And it's a, I think sometimes people feel like once you've made the, um, the 53 man roster at the end, that that's it. And, but it's not, we're looking for the, the right 53 plus 16 at cut down, but then we're looking for the right 48 on a weekly basis. And that's going to change whether it's training camp, whether it's during the season, whether it's during the off season, it's a fluid process. And we're always looking to bring in competition at every single position. So I'd say the scouting department is they're working hard, evaluating the players here in the building. And it's not just what you see out on the field. It's, it's in the meeting room. And it, it, it's what players are doing off the field. It's what they're doing and with the performance staff and the, and, and the equipment room. It's how they treat people around because we're looking for the right types of players. And it's not literally just what you're doing on the football field. Um, are, are you endearing to your teammates and the people in the building? Because to have the right ethos, to have the right culture, and to build the type of team we're going to build, it, it, there are a lot of factors involved in that, and we evaluate every, every part of it. You said before that every move you make is interconnected. How do you view, because that, most GMs, most teams have philosophies of tackles versus guards versus centers and how you pay them. How do you view that tackles, guards, centers, and how, in, how you view them when it comes to financials? You mean, do you want to invest more? Right. Do you, do, do you look at more like tackle as the investment, center as the investment? Do you look totally at the player? Like, how does that square? Because most teams have different, every team seems to have a different philosophy. Yeah, and it, and it depends. It's all a moving target. You can have a certain amount of money budgeted that you want to spend at a certain place, but it, it's always going to depend on the player. We're not going to say, hey, we're not going to spend a lot of money on a center, or we're not going to spend a lot of money on a right tackle, because if you get the right player there, then you'll, you'll adjust. So, so I think that just depends on, it's a player by player basis, really at any position. You can go to the, some people might say, oh, we're not gonna pay a nose tackle a lot of money, but if it's the right type of guy that's disruptive, and we're looking for multipliers, we're looking for players that make people around them better. And you can find that at, at any position, and when you do find it, then um, you wanna invest in it. Terry, you guys, it's almost been like an intentional conversation here the last couple of three days about competition on the field, but at the same time, both Arthur and Dean have talked about <coughs> building within, almost like chemistry, culture, things like that. I know how you measure growth points in the competition on the field. How do you measure the growth of the football team and all the other things that it takes to win? Yeah, good question. Dean was, he was awesome. I think you guys had to bleep him out a few times. Um, he was a uh, cool thing about Dean too, is that's who he truly is. He's that passionate and he really cares and loves his team. But it's, it's, we're measuring it in, in literally everything they do. No different than when a college, so the college scouts are out right now and they're already working on the 23 class and they're in the buildings right now and they don't just talk to uh, the head coach or the position coach. They talk to everybody in that building, uh, whether we're talking about academic services, they talk about the previous teammates, they talk about talk to people on campus. We want to know who those human beings truly are. And it's, it's not a perfect, it's not like a perfect science that we can always, but it's, a, it's every part of it. So again, when the players are here, we're looking at literally every part of what they do and, and, and who they are as human beings. Not just if they're making the plays on the field, but how do you respond when you have a bad day, when you have a bad play, when you get beat, are you putting your head down and walking away? Are you flying downfield um, to, to trying to make that play? And, and, and Coach does a good job of seeing every single thing. Everything the players are doing, it, it, there's a reason for it. Whether when we have the special teams period, I, I've seen places that they kind of take that time off and they're not really into it. But on those periods, when we're doing the, the jammer drill, what are you doing out there on those plays? And, and how are you handling every single drill because it matters? When we're doing the open field tackling drill, how are you doing that? So I think it's it's the way how you do anything is how you do everything and and how you handle not just when you're in one on one drills and you're making plays there, but every single part of it. When you're on the backside of a play, are you flying downfield? Um, are you blocking downfield for a teammate um, in the meetings? Are, are you helping other people? Again, are you a multiplier and, and do you endear to your teammates? So it's really every part of it. How much behind or how much further ahead? 
We're in a good place, and, and, and not to compare it um, to last year, but we're in a good place. I, I, I feel like you, you really, you really feel it with the players that these guys they really care about each other. And, and I don't even know how you. It's tough to put your finger on it. I can't tell you one specific thing or one specific moment when you see it, but these these players they really love and care about each other, and and they take care of each other. And um, it's hard out there. And uh, I know we had a couple of scuffles the other day, and it's hard because these guys are. They're taking it, you want them to take it right to the line and you want guys to fight and compete, but then you have to be able to have that emotional control and pull back and it's not always easy, but I believe we have the right culture and the guys are gonna handle that. But it's a, it, it, this is a team that really loves and cares about each other. I know there was always some uncertainty with Goldman in terms of how he was gonna project, but- Say it again. I, I, Goldman, in terms, yeah. I, I know there was always some level of uncertainty given his last couple of years. Yeah. But with his retirement, What's your level of concern now on the defensive line in terms of needing another body up there? Yes, yeah, like you say with Goldman, anytime you sign a player that time of the year, there's a chance for that, and uh, and and so we supported him and and, and you know we root for him moving forward. I'll say on the defensive line, we like the competitiveness. Obviously, Grady showed up in outstanding shape, and, and he looks the best he's he's ever looked. He's been outstanding, and we're, we, there's a lot of competition outside of him. But again, like at every position, we're looking. And, and we're always looking. We're looking to bring in competition. So we see some good things in this building right now with some of the veterans and some of the young guys, but we're always looking outside the building, um, whether we're talking about signing players off the street, trading for players, and it's not going to stop as the season starts. A guy like Rush, we sign our Pinnell, we sign those guys during the year. It doesn't, it doesn't end at the final cut down. We're always trying to find help. Are you confident at all that somebody might pop free somewhere around the league between now and the season? Well, it, it's a. It, sometimes it's not a guy popping free. Sometimes it's not a guy getting cut. Sometimes it's a trade. Um, again, at every spot, I, I, I love our pro department, and they're really pounding the pavement, and they're they're assessing these other rosters. So um, that's our job to do that. It, it, it's never. It's a fluid process throughout the whole year. Jerry, any update on uh, Brian Edwards' left practice a little bit early uh, on Saturday? Yeah, fell on that shoulder, um, and uh, we've taken a look at it, and, and we'll see where he is. No update. Um, at this point, um, not not sure at this okay. point. Yeah. yeah. First hire, I think I remember during your introductory press conference, it was you. You were talking about your son and music. You were showing yourself he could do it because you wanted to be a GM as well. You were talking about your qualifications. You were talking about your color. I know this off season, the league is here doing diversity. Doing diversity, excuse me. Um, where do you think the league is right now in diversity? Yeah. Th thanks for asking that question. And I think. Um, we always try to focus on this building, and um, and I think again, like in controlling the things that you can control, we can control this building. And um, in my mind, it's all about the the, the, the way your cult, what your culture is, and the reason I was able to grow and develop is not because of my color, and no one gave me an opportunity because of my color, but I was always included because of the work I put into it. And, and, and I was able to be included and I was able to develop. And that's our goal here, um, top to bottom in the building. We want to make sure that we're giving people opportunities to develop. And, and the way we do that is we make sure we're pouring into people and, and we have education programs in-house. The league shouldn't have to give us have accelerator programs or it, we should be able to do that in-house with everyone, not just people that are a certain color or a certain race or a certain sex, it should be everyone. Everyone should have those opportunities and it's our job to do that. And we should be inclusive in all our processes. Um, trust is the most important factor. And when we have trust, then we can, we can involve everyone and be inclusive. So that's what we're doing here. And I think we're in a really good place. Thanks. When you, have, yeah. when you have Arthur Smith saying over the weekend that that was one of the most competitive practices that he's seen since he's been here, does that give you a little bit more confidence that you're putting the right guys on the field given the fact that it's so early in training camp? It does. It, it, that, that was Y'all are out here. It was a fun practice. And, and I do want to say the fans, it was, it's cool for them to be out here. And, and we appreciate they've been coming out, uh, particularly on Saturday. That was a really good group out there. And I hope they're having good experiences. We appreciate them. But it's true. The competitiveness is real. And, and, and that's, at, that's at every spot. And it's not just, it, it, again, in the one-on-one -on -one periods or when you're at the point, but it's backside. It's all the things you, you see uh, linemen running 30 yards downfield trying to escort running backs into the end zone. And so now we put on the pads. And, and now we can really see because a lot of those positions, 
really every position on the on the field, but the pads really define you. So we're gonna start seeing some separation. You ask about the D line, okay, now we're putting pads on, let's see. And so it's uh, it, it's the competitiveness has been outstanding though, and it, it's been fun to watch, and it does. It speaks to the character of the team. We've got a lot of guys out there that love football and love to compete. Thanks. A uh, coach, I'm sorry, you Terry. You the same question you asked three times already. No, no, it's a different one. Are you going to use your sidekick? No, no, <laughs> wow, that hurts. Yeah, that, that's just that's just wrong. No, this is strictly from for me. Um, any thoughts on the Hall of Fame class going in this uh, this Saturday? I heard you were uh, and, uh, you're out here posing on people wearing your uh, senior uh, Hall of Fame shirt the other day. <laughs> but uh, any thoughts on the class? You see more from Georgia. Uh, Brian Young coached here. Sam Mills, I imagine you watched him growing up. No doubt. Uh, just some thoughts on uh, some of the people going in on Saturday. Yeah, just the, the, the people you just described. Those are the kind of players we're looking for. You talk about those traits and, and, and who they are and all the things that, that they embody, the type of players they were. That's awesome. And, and you get excited when, when, when guys like that, no different than the player we put into the ring of honor the other day. Um, that's exciting, players like that, because they embody all the characteristics, everything that you want. That's the type of football team you want to be. You want to be tough, smart, competitive, and you want to go out there and fight and compete. So when guys like that get honored, we always get excited. Exactly what we talked to you since you did sign Green for the extension. What was it that told you more to get that done? And also, like, was that a difficult thing to get done? How did that end up? No, no, because he was motivated uh, to get it done. He wanted to be here, and, and just like we were talking about, you want to reward players like that, um, able to give him the extension, able to give Jake an extension, and, and Young Way. That's exciting because those are the kind of players that you want to you want to build around because of who they are as people, the type of teammates they are. Obviously, they're good football players, but you know they're they're multipliers. They're going to make people around them better because they really care about and love this team. And, and Grady's one of those guys, and we're, we're really appreciative to have him.